All right, morning everyone. And I just want to thank you all for joining us and for coming to listen out to our podcast this morning and the conversation that we're about to have. Um, before this conversation gets started, I think it's probably wise to say that this conversation is most likely going to be a challenging one for a lot of people um, for, in a myriad of different ways. Um, but we welcome that challenge because ultimately we are looking to, to grow, to better ourselves, to be more unified um, as the body of Christ. And that means having hard conversations. That means, you know, looking at the places where we need to stand up for one another. And so I pray that your hearts will be softened, that your minds will be open and that you'll hear what God is saying through this conversation. And I will now hand over to our wonderful Lani who is gonna facilitate our conversation this morning. Hello, everybody. Um, do you know, in preparation for this talk, uh, the four of us have been praying together. Mm. And I think right before we need to introduce uh, Fiola and Paul as well, I just want, Paul, do you mind reading that verse again? Because I think that sure, is the sure. premise. That's what, that's what we want to keep hold of throughout this yeah, conversation, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. With pleasure. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. And this is from the N N NLT. It says this. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, yeah. binding yourselves together with peace. Another version says, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. And I think, Paul, you mentioned as well that this is not, it, it's not a, a passive instruction. No, no, no. You have to make every effort, isn't it? It's oh, endeavouring, right? it's working at, it's, it's intentional. It doesn't come automatically. One would think it would, but it's <laughs> not. It's actually making every effort. That means hard work. Yep. It's hard work, it's intentional, it's being diligent, it's being hard. And, and with a goal of peace, the bond of peace. And, and that, for our Christian perspective, has to be our goal in all that we do and all that we are. And whether it's a conversation of race or any other matter, it's endeavouring to keep the unity of the spirit. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a goal. That's a goal. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a kingdom goal. Do you want to start off and introduce yourself maybe to people who um, don't know that know you and we can go um, round and just each do our little skit. Okay, I would normally go ladies first, but since you asked me, I'll, I'll do it. Um, okay, um, my name is Paul Henry. I'm a member of Restore with my family. We've been at Vineyard Now Restore for almost 14 years. Oh, wow. Which is quite a, quite a, a, a great season. So we've seen lots of changes and um, we are passionate about worship. We are passionate about the presence of God. I'm active in the um, worship team as much as I can. Um, and served for a season as an elder as well within the church. Mm -hmm. um, professionally, I'm a chartered architect and run a business with, with my founding partner, Rowena, and some t and a team um, for the last 22 years. And um, I'm very, very blessed to be who I am in Christ. And it's an honor to be on this conversation today with these wonderful people. That's me. I will <laughs> go next. <laughs> um, I'm Lani. I am I'm 42 years old. I am a white South African, <laughs> which I think is completely irrelevant, but quite interesting in, in this context. And I'm, I'm, I'm humbled and really thankful that you guys are allowing me to be part of this conversation. So thank you. The three children are at school and um, the two sausage dogs I have closed off somewhere else. So I'm really hoping that you won't hear um, lots of screaming and shouting or <laughs> anything else from my side. I'm an audiologist and I work with uh, deaf children in a cochlear implant program. I love it. It's very... Um, dramatic the before and after when they can't hear and when they start to hear um, but I only do that for two days a week the rest of the week I don't get paid for what I do 
<laughs> but that's that's me and um i'll hand over to you Fiala. hi um, and thank you everyone um i'm a politics and sociology student and i was i guess it's time i was a member of restore for like 18 years but then i went to uni and if i'm around then you might see me at restore still mm. Um, I will also introduce myself uh, as the, <laughs> the initial voice in the sky. Um, <laughs> but my name is Miki Zubis. Um, I'm an actor. I have been acting for about four or five years. Um, I've been a member of Restore for seven years plus. I've lost count now. So I think I stick to the same number for a while and then add a couple more as I go. Um, so plus or minus a few. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to be having this conversation this morning and to, or whatever the time is for when you're listening to this, um, but for us, it's the morning, um, to, yeah, to open, to open this conversation and just, yeah, start making changes through the things that we talk about and, and taking action where action is, need, is needed. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, do you know, there's been a question that this morning I woke up and I thought we sort of had a dry run at, um, mm. about this conversation and I asked a really awkward question. Um, I asked you about a positive reaction that you had with a white person throughout the course of this pandemic, specifically relating to um, Black Lives Matter, George Floyd, or whatever the case may be. And the way you guys responded uh, was so interesting because I realized that was a really clumsy question, but I think in fact the heart was, I wanted to know where has God been for you in this whole process? Has there been moments with either people of your own skin color or, or people with other skin colors that have been sort of God moments? Have you had, have you had those moments during this time? Has do you feel God leading you through this? Where is God? I will start, but I certainly feel like God is everywhere and He's in everything. Um, but I would certainly say that there have been communities and specifically black communities that have really helped in terms of support with my family, with um, people at church, people who I didn't even know were going to restore, but over the past two years, I've got, I've grown to know them and 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 connect with them, and and the understanding of what has happened both in the last two years, but also <laughs> for hundreds of years, um, has been such such a healing a healing thing, um, because you know sometimes you you can find certain things in in some places but there are certain things that some people just understand um and that can be really like supportive and helpful so i'd say you know through through conversations that i've certainly had with with paul um marina and various other people in the group with my own family members um friends who are in america um specifically black people in america um that i've been able to have conversations with and just find you know people are reaching out a lot more and being like hey how are you doing how are you really doing what's going on today you didn't see yourself and and being seen in a different way to how maybe I would have been seen prior to to COVID if you can say that um but yeah it's been it's been an eye-opening and a beautiful experience to find a community that I maybe wasn't as connected to before mm -hmm. deliberately remaining quiet to give the, <laughs> to give the chance to speak of all for the, uh, the two of you to contribute as well if you have something. Siona, do you know? <laughs> so, well, I don't really think I can add much to what Miki has said, except for I agree that I think God kind of has brought the Restore Black community together because even though I've been going to Restore for like 18 years or oh, well, at that point maybe like no yeah 18 mm -hmm. um I didn't even know the names of like all the black members of Restore Church yeah. like I like if I knew their faces I didn't know their names if I knew their names I might not have known their faces and like mm -hmm. I didn't know them fully <laughs> as people and 
yeah I think that it is like a god-given thing that like that we're brought together and like in dialogue with like the rest of the church and stuff very good very good I think I'm just going to um echo or, or put in context what Muki and, and Sheila have said um effectively when things happen with um, George Floyd etc going forward and um Ian put it out there in terms of the church coming to him um and being happy to listen to conversations etc um Muki Jennifer Isikor Rowena um had the really good idea to bring people together. Um, I was invited in, and I think so was Vicky as well. Mm -hmm. um, Muki did all the legwork, but <laughs> everybody's email address in the whole church, um, <laughs> which is not an easy thing to do, and was able to email everybody and then WhatsApp people to bring together um, the Black community of Restore. And I think it was um, a very, very positive thing. And, and part of the ethos was, rather than people going to, back to leadership individually, as a collective body, speaking, hearing hearts, sharing hearts, sharing spirit, sharing experience, and then feeding that back to help to build the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And um, in that process, it's been really helpful to support others, because people yeah. have gone through stuff. Yeah. on various levels that you would never know of. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been a very, very good thing to do and to be doing in terms of support mm -hmm. and infrastructure, but with the goal of just feeding back, just helping um, one another, one another in, in a season of um, a difficult time. Go ahead, Mookie. Yeah, I thought it would be good to chime in at, at that point because, you know, um, the past two years has been incredibly difficult for a variety of reasons. Not only um, is the obvious being COVID, um, but also with the with you know police brutality and the things that have been happening in America, and also realizing and something that I kind of called an unveiling, which was like somebody just took something off of my eyes, and I went, "Oh, I can't unsee this." It's like I've been seeing it, but I've been seeing it through some sort of netted type situation where I was aware of certain things happening, but you kind of move past it because that's what you do to survive. That's what you do mm. to keep moving forward. We've got to keep progressing. We've got to keep taking steps and, you know, lockdown and COVID and all the things that came whilst I would never wish that upon anybody. And I don't want to go through that again. It put people in their homes <laughs> and no one could run away no one could jump to another country or you know go out and have a party or drink or do well you could drink but you're in your house you <laughs> had to you you were met immediately by these like by the different types of news across the world you didn't have anywhere else to turn and so it's now in your face and you can't hide away from these things anymore. And it was a realization, I'd say personally for me, that community is such a key thing and the ability to, to connect with, with, with everyone, but especially people who understand and have a, have a, have a, a perspective that you can relate to is key. Um, because I would say definitely like, <laughs> I'm probably jumping topics now, but you know, church, I did question where church was in that time. I did question what church was doing. I did question why weren't they at the helm of something that is, is incredibly hurtful and painful. The body, of, a part of the body of Christ is burning. <laughs> like the arm is, is on fire, but the rest of the body is just moving along like that's normal. And I think, you know, it's been, it's, it's really important for us to be honest about what's really and truly going on in the world. Because whilst we're not of the world, we, we are in it. Yep. And we as a church have to be aware of the problems, of, of the hurt, of the pain, of the struggles of others. The same way that, I mean, Paul, in some of our uh, conversations that we've had outside, of, well, in planning this, you mentioned about, you know, um, our South African brothers and sisters not being able to go home for Christmas. Mm. Then another 
lockdown of some sorts or closing of the borders or something like that and you step in and you're like hey I'm here for you Mm. I'm here to support you in your pain I'm here to support you in your hurt I'm here to see and be there with you and cry with you and 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 you know struggle with you the same should be for everybody else and there was a season of time and there continues to be a season of time where the black community are hurting they're going through pain, they are struggling and they are battling something that has been ongoing for generations. (laughs) And there's silence and that hurts. Mm -hmm. That's a really painful thing to experience. You know, we talk about the love of God and we talk about how we should love our neighbor as we love ourselves. But when you're not seeing that love, it's like, well, then what are we doing? As Christians, as children of God, as this body of Christ, how are we not standing up for one another and supporting one another and seeing injustices? Because I swear it says in the Bible <laughs> that God genuinely hates injustice. Mm. Mm. I'll find the reference and we can put that down somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's probably plenty. But God hates injustice and there's injustice happening everywhere. And, you know, it's not the expectation that everybody will, fi- we will fix all the problems in one go. Mm -hmm. and that everybody will be able to deal with everything but if we all just took a moment to realize that hey right now my brothers and sisters are hurting let me stand Mm -hmm. with them let Mm -hmm. me support them let me walk with them let me see you in your multiple hues of blackness Mm -hmm. say hey I've got your back Mm -hmm. I will speak up for you Mm -hmm. I think you know the journey that we're on is is it's a long one and it's been a long one um mm. but it's conversations like these that will that mm. will hopefully bring us one step closer to being unified the way that we we need to be <laughs> um i want to ask what makes you feel seen as a black person and what makes you feel validated in your experience and then the follow up from that is because I feel you're going to say something about faith and works here. I, I hear that coming up. But do, you want to, do you want to address that side of it? What makes you, what, I think I'm, it's, it's a clumsy question again, but what do you want me to do? Disclaimer, clumsy question. Just, just hear from that what, you, what, what pops up in your heart. Because as a, as a white person, I, I think some people immediately are vocal. I remember in, in this Black Lives Matter, <clears throat> everything kicked off on social media. There was one person in our church that he was a white guy. And every day, he didn't say a word, but every day he posted a picture of a black Jesus. Mm. And that just stirred so many things in my mind, but he was there and he was active. And I, um, I wasn't, I didn't say anything on social media because I thought, oh my goodness, there's so many things happening inside. I don't know where to go with this. But I think at that point I reached out to you and to Jennifer Isakor, you mentioned her as well, Paul, just to say, look, I'm, I'm starting this journey. I've got no idea what to do, but I'm, I'm just starting to listen. I want, I, I'm, I'm, taking cues um so what would you say what makes you then feel heard and seen and validated in this process how can I support you Paul do you want to take that one okay I'll, I'll, take, I'll take that one um, I'm, I'm just going to go back to the, the last part and then you said what do you want me to do it is not your responsibility Lani <laughs> okay <laughs> So take that off your shoulders. Nobody's asking you to do anything. And, and, and God forbid we're asking you to do that because that's not, that's not body, is it? We, we are a body. We are, we, we're looking at this through the lens of Christianity uh, rather than any other lens, which is very, very quite important. It's, it's a lifestyle thing. And so nobody's asking you to do a thing. And what you are doing is you're facilitating this discussion, which is a good thing, so that you're already doing something positive. Um, seen and listened to. First of all, um, again, going back to what we did at the time, we um, corporately voiced things amongst ourselves and corporately packaged that 
so that we could hear speak with one voice, with clarity, with cohesion, and um, with more effectiveness. Because everybody has different stories and has a different, yes. um, and that's quite important to to appreciate that. We're so not whether you, exactly, so whether you you're white, pink, blue, green, or whatever, everybody has a different story and a different history, and we and it, and it was important to acknowledge that and hear that and hear that experience. And so, um, part and parcel, yes, it's, it's listening, it's hearing your truth, whether that's hurtful or not, whether that makes a surprise or not. It's hearing that, and, and I think that's a, a great thing. And and that process did did commence, which is honourable and right and, and, and a blessing. Um, the next thing is, what do you do with what you hear? Mm. And that's there is a responsibility in terms of it's faith and work. So show me by my faith, by your faith, by your by, by your work. So it's so it's actually taking those words and then intentionally saying, what do we as a people do with that what do we as a people um because i've cried with you mm. I've, I've 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 weeped with you i cannot be you mm, mm. and that's thing i cannot be you but i hear you but then from that point where do how, some other than a child or a parent and a child the child cries you lift up the baby you comfort the baby you do stuff with that child you don't just leave the baby there crying. Because <laughs> yeah. in society, we'd be saying actually something's not, not quite right. Yeah. So it, the same as in natural, so in the spiritual. So spiritual, you can get the okay, heard the cry, lifted the baby, comes the baby, fed the baby, still crying. So maybe it's something else from. And, 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 and it's that kind of nurturing of all people that's needed yeah. in terms of not, because that validates. And mm -hmm. that brings, and if you talk about attachment theory, it helps to build positive attachments mm. um, because disconnect can happen very easy. So it's how to build the positive attachment mm. um, because of the trauma. Mm. So it's trauma-informed leadership. It's trauma-informed um, pastoring. It's trauma-informed relationships yes. because everybody from every level has experienced trauma of a sort. Yes. Um, this season has been traumatic in, in various dimensions. And so, so it's, from that point, we then say, okay, then how do we build that? How do we work with that one? What, what intentional things do we do to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace? Mm. And I think that's probably where the conversation is at. Mm. Um, so as that we start to what intentional things are we doing um, mm. to keep that validation there? And it's not a question of it's got to be highlighted every single week. And um, one concept talk about inclusivity. So you show pictures of all people an Asian person, a white person, a black person, a green person, well, just to, I mean, show that the, the, the diversity, which is a good thing. But what we can't do is to use that as a, um, it's like, I call it eco bling. You can put a solar yeah. panel on a building, but that does not mean it's sustainable. Yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's actually, it's, it's going to be deeper than that. It's going to be part of our DNA, part of our culture, part of, of our thinking of all people, of all needs, of the body to give the unity of the spirit. And it's that, and the, only, the, the, the beautiful thing about being in Christ, it, the answers of the world are different, thought differently. Yes. We have a basis and possibly the only hope for the world is the church as we know through Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's because of that positioning, we have the unique ability to say, Jesus, how would you do this? Mm. How did you reach out? Mm. How did, were you actively doing that and kept on doing that? What is your heart in this? And then out of that, we begin to learn a, a new way of doing it. Mm. Because our books and our series will only take us to so far. My good works will only take me so far because mm. my capacity is only so much because I'm still doing my own stuff as well. Yes. And so I need something else which is greater than me to step in, to do something which is bigger than me mm. to make a difference. Yeah. So it's a, it's a big answer, but it, just does that help a little bit to unpack it? Yeah, absolutely. Just wanted to shout out to Fiola because she wanted yeah. to. Yeah, please. Go on it, Lani. Um, <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything significant. It was just um, a verse I was reminded of while speaking, which is said that John verse, it's kind of like, let us not love with words and speech, but like with actions and in truth. Right, right, and yeah. I feel like that's really key because like there's only so much like words can do and like action like how you treat like 
the black people in your daily lives and like broader anti-racism work and stuff guided by that spirit, the spirit and that can really go a long way yeah agreed agreed yeah Lani. no i um i hear what you're saying i think for me i've been asking god what do you want me to do um what is my response to this situation? And I think I am a very, I'm very much a relational person. I am a people's person. And I think since this whole thing has opened up, something that's happened in my life is God has just made me so much more aware of black people in my very direct vicinity. Something as simple as a woman in front of me in the queue at Lidl. I wouldn't have noticed her before, but all of a sudden she's there and she's black and she's beautiful. And I find myself looking at her, wondering, what is your life like? Do you have children? Have you got a job? And I, I think God is just sort of unearthing um, a love in my heart that I, didn't really realize was it um, intentional before. I think I've been unknowingly so ignorant. <laughs> you just go through life, everything's fine. Mookie's there on a Sunday, she's leading worship. Oh yeah, Mookie's fine. But to be mindful, to be more intentional in making people feel seen and heard. Mm. Um, I, in one of our dry runs for this conversation, Tiola, you mentioned um, the opportunity at the end of a church service, for, for example, um, that if you, if you see someone standing alone having, having coffee or not having anyone to chat to, um, let's try and reach out to each other, you know, I just see, see each other. Um, and I'm very humbled that Muki and I, since we decided to do this conversation. Muki and I have had quite a few conversations with each other because initially I was quite nervous to do this because I don't know what to say to not be offending. And I know I'm sometimes quite clumsy in wording things. And <clears throat> we've had to literally say to each other, look, we trust each other to believe best intentions and we're gonna help each other through this. We sometimes had conversations where I I could I can hear myself putting my foot in it and I it's too late and I don't know what to do. And then Mookie was very gracious. We put the phone down and then I have to start speaking to God, what's going on here? What have I said? What's what are you trying to show me? And then I have to bring Mookie back off an hour later. It's like Mookie, I just said this thing. And then she explains to me how it feels from her perspective, what she hears when I say that. And I think that's been such a liberating experience for me to approach this conversation with knowing that we are brothers and sisters in Christ, because that is our secret ingredient, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. We know that ultimately I want to be for you. Um, and the other thing I think, Muki, you mentioned as well is this is going to be a model for how we intersect with other minorities, other people who feel unseen, unheard, looked over. So we want to do this right, don't we? Mm. Um, you know, I actually haven't got a next question, but I feel like <laughs> one of you might have something to say. See, Ali, you've got your hand. <laughs> um, no, um, what you were saying kind of just reminds me of like your earlier question, which was like, what can you do? I feel like a lot of people think like anti-racism work and like activism is like protesting and like lobbying parliament. And it is like, that's such a, like important part of it but it's mm -hmm. also like really interpersonal and like with the people in your daily lives because relational a lot of yeah relational because for most people like that's what's realistic to them like seeing someone who's probably on their own and like asking for coffee or something yeah 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 because I think ultimately we're, we will we all want to be seen <laughs> I don't think there is one part of society that thinks, yeah, I just want to be hidden or I just want to be, you know, in the corner, in the back and unnoticed. And because that's that's not it. Like we, as, as humans, we crave connection. We crave being together, regardless of who you are, as, even as an introvert <laughs> at mm. some point in time there are, to connect with people is a requirement. I think just 
of, of, of how we've been built and yeah. to be seen, to be acknowledged, to be, whether you understand or not, I think that's, that's a different conversation altogether. But, you know, I ultimately think that, you know, we don't want to be in a position where we have to talk about this all the time. Yeah. We don't want to be having to make the point that we are black people when we've been going through this and da 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 da. Like, I don't think that's that's something we desire. Like we, <laughs> I, well, let me speak for myself. I, I want to be seen as a human being. Yeah. And it's not to say that my color disappears. It's not mm. about, you know, I see no color or I don't see who you are because my blackness, my brown skin, my melanin is a part of who I am. That's how God made me. I am, I've been made and we've all been made in the image of God. Mm. So I don't, I don't regret, I don't hate, I don't, you know, see this body, this person, this human that I am as anything wrong. Mm -hmm. But in society and in, 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 the, in the world that we walk through, yeah. it's not seen that way. Mm -hmm. the, the, it's not equal and it's certainly not equitable for black people. I mean, they often, I don't know if you've like heard of the reference of the totem pole. Yes. Usually it starts off with the white, white people at the top then it moves to I think Asians but usually at the bottom at the very bottom are black people and the societies that we you know we're both we've been talking both about inside and outside of church but they both <laughs> they kind of church is, is actually an institution as much as it is you know about the people itself mm. um, but the world that we live in sees us right at the bottom we have institutional racism that occurs on a daily basis the way black people are profiled education at school um how relationships is a whole other topic you know how how black men and women are seen in relationships there's so many different spheres where we are seen as less than in whatever sort of way you know having and, and it's different because you know you think about america where it's i feel like racism's head in america is very direct it's very in your face. You can't avoid it. It's not, if you don't see it, you must really be blind. But in the UK, it's a different context of the same ugly head that kind of rises in a way where it's kind of more obscure. You don't quite see it. So people are quick to deny that racism is in this country too. Mm. You know, comments like, oh, you speak well. <laughs> and you're sitting there thinking, so did the white man make English? Or <laughs> what, what's the situation here? It's, it's all of these little comments about, you know, um, how you look, how you sound, how teachers can approach you in schools. It, there's so, there's such, there's so many things we have to deal with as black people. So when you come to church, a place where it's supposed to, you're supposed to feel welcome and, mm. and, and, and um, accepted and to know that that sometimes isn't the case, that's a very challenging thing you know and so it's again I think I'm bringing this back just to kind of highlight how much the church needs to be at the forefront of this yes how much we as the people of God need to stand up and say this is not okay yeah. and I think Paul said something no I think I know Paul said something when we were again prepping for this for this conversation in that we're not going to fix this in the generation in this generation or the next but we can be um, instrumental to the changes that are to come. Ultimately, God has the victory. And I yeah, trust yeah. and believe and know that God is yeah. fighting, has fought, is fighting all of the battles. But like we said, faith without works is dead. A lack okay. of action, a lack of not just being intentional, but making that intention active mm -hmm. is pointless saying nice words and that I feel for you I'm here for you and we probably made this point already but I kind of want to bring it back again like to say these things and to say we're standing with you sometimes that can just be a performative thing you know there was a season when everyone put the black tiles on Instagram and said hey we're standing with you and I said a black tile a little black square on a on an app <laughs> to let the world know that you are for the people <sighs> it's not enough Mm. it's not enough and whilst it's not um how Paul said earlier about it not being Lani's responsibility and it's not 
we all collectively have a responsibility to look after one another, yep. to support one another, to be there for one another, to be okay with being wrong. You know, that's why I love you, Lani, because you, you will, you will, with humility, put your foot in it and then own up to the fact that you put your foot in it. And then we can have a conversation about how we better ourselves. And then we, we both grow because at the same time, do you think, I think people think that we enjoy <laughs> having these conversations and talking about these really hard, like I'll speak for myself. I don't at times. It makes me uncomfortable at times to have to keep bringing this up, but it brings growth in knowing that in order for us to move forward as, as a community, we have to talk about the things that hurt. Yeah. You don't break your bone in your leg and then say, here's a, here's a little plaster. You'll be all right. Mm-hmm. You say, okay, we need to scan that. We need to find what the root cause of your pain is and then fix it. Mm-hmm. We've got, with the Holy Spirit guiding us and showing us what we're supposed to do next. That's how we attack these things. But if we just say, oh, oh no, we've, you guys keep talking about the black issues so much. It's so exhausting. It's tiring. This is the existent, this is what how we exist 24-7. Yeah. Whether it's subconscious or conscious, yeah. these are the things we think about all of the time. This mm-hmm. is our daily thought. So the last two years of it now opening up, and some people are becoming coming to realize this new thing. It's been our experience for the longest time. And we're talking again, generations. So I don't know where I'm trying to land with this but I think there's just it's both there's a lot of work to do but we also can if we all stand up <laughs> mm. and you know support one another and actually take action in whatever way that looks like for each individual we have that responsibility as the body mm. <laughs> to do that for one another mm. so yeah so I, yeah, I know your hand was up and you probably had something to say did I I love talking. <laughs> um, no, I think um, my point was it's like irrelevant now. It might be relevant. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, when you were giving examples of like racism stuff, it's just like it's so shocking to me how the church sees itself like as separate from that. Like I know they have like the colonial history and stuff, but they still have like quite a recent history of racism, like just the fact we have like white churches and black churches it's because of like the racism that black migrants faced in the 60s and meant they couldn't go to the white churches yeah, and like yeah. even today like in the church of england like a lot of the black clergy are saying speaking up about like the racism in the church it's like a show called is the church racist and yes i saw all. that yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're still yeah. speaking up about race in the church and like um certain members of the clergy are like being paid off to like not speak about racism so yeah it's, I don't know it's just kind of shocking how we like I feel like the church kind of segregates itself like it sees like oh police brutality bad um microaggressions in society bad like comments about how like well some of that person speaking sees itself as kind of like apolitical moral but it still has like a really recent history of racism that I don't yeah. feel like it's recorded enough yeah it, have you got time for something lighthearted? <laughs> I have a white, white, white church, black church story. Um, I, I, I hear what you're saying, Fiona, and I just, I immediately thought back to a time when um, Sumpi and I were on an outreach in a black community in South Africa, and I know there's probably a lot to say for white saviorism there, but um, we attended a proper, like, black African South African church and it was the most amazing experience because those people don't stop singing they don't stop singing someone takes the lead and then they just roll and white church in South Africa is timed you've got an hour and then you're out of there because we have to go and barbecue Mm -hmm. and then it was so different and so beautiful and so hot in the church. I just, I couldn't do the whole service because it was so long. And um, what a beautiful dream to think that church could be one. There could be unity. And, and 
obviously there is space for different exp expressions of lunch. Yeah. Um, but just being able to open the doors for each other, um, isn't it? Just to um, embrace. Because mm. how else are we going to find our way back to each other if we've been segregated so long? Um, I wanted to ask you something else, Muki. Mm -hmm. I think this might be very personal for you because we've also had a few conversations during lockdown when um, George Floyd died. Um, I wanted to know, I think some of these hurts run very deep, don't they? How, how do you manage in your daily life? How does forgiveness and healing and social justice intersect for, for you? How do you keep that balance in, in um, be, being passion for social justice but also finding healing and forgiveness. Is that something that resonates with you or not? Yeah, it's a constant daily thing. I have to constantly remind myself. I have to constantly come back to God because first of all, he's my maker. <laughs> I don't serve man, I serve God. And so when I'm reminded that, you know, at the end of the day, the same way that I was made by God, so was every other person and human being on this earth. And so it's a reminder that, you know, I have found moments where I have seen, where God has shown me people to be his children. And I've had to be reminded of that. Now it doesn't make it, it doesn't make it easy because there is plenty to be angry about. There's plenty to be frustrated about. There's plenty to, you know, hate. Yeah. <laughs> it's such an easy portal for hate to just jump on through and say hey do you know what you hate everybody but that's not who God made me to be that's not the heart that God gave me and so it's a regular and repetitive action to come back to the foot of the cross and say Lord like I'm bringing this to you first because first of all I know you can take the heat from me <laughs> just your, your little daughter who's just fuming I'm going to bring this to you I need your wisdom. I need your understanding. I need your guidance in how I approach this. But at the same time, it doesn't stop me from having those hard conversations. And I'm having them a lot more now. I think that's, that's something of a blessing of, from the past two years. It's that it's kind of given me a kick up the backside to say, Muki, you also cannot be silent on this. The same way you're asking other people not to not talk. That was a double negative, my bad. <laughs> You That's also can by the way. I know not to not to not to <laughs> deal with that one. Um, but the same way that I ask people to not be silent, mm -hmm. I also have to speak up. Yeah. And everybody has a different name. Theola was talking about, you know, people are out on the streets who are, you know, marching and 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 approaching the government and all of those other things. They are all there's a lane that everybody has. And the lane that I will stand in is the one where I have those interpersonal conversations with the people in my space. The same way that I can choose to pray for you from afar. If I realize that you're not, the energy or the, the behaviors that people are bringing in my life aren't okay for me and are not healthy to me because my, my mental health has, I have to stick it out. I told God I want to be here to, like, to, to at least 100. <laughs> I want a long life. <laughs> so at the same time, with wisdom and with knowledge is understanding that I can pray for people, I can forgive you, but I don't have to have you near me, you know? Mm -hmm. Like there's so many different things and tools and ways that God has, has taught me and shown me that you can keep going forward, but you have to make, you have to be wise about how you approach different things because there are people who are not for you. So I don't know whether I'm asking answering the question, but I think it's a multifaceted thing of understanding that forgiveness is is actually not always not really for the other person. It's for you. It's it's for me. My heart health, my my mind health, my spirit health, all of those things will be healed when I forgive and continue to forgive because it's not a day, it's not just a one time thing. Mm. Healing is not a linear journey. Forgiveness is not a linear journey. So it's, it's about being wise 
and also being understanding that everybody else are also every other person like you like Fiona like Paul like Rowena like every person we know they are on their own personal journey that God yeah. is going through with them and I leave that to God because I am not God mm-hmm. all I know is that I can do my bit where I am in whatever space I occupy be myself fully who God has made me to be and that's it everything mm-hmm. else is by the by I will leave that that's God's responsibility and he is more than capable of carrying that out but when it comes to me and mine I will forgive the best I can I will love the best I can I will shout when I need to I will talk when I need to because God gave me that voice mm-hmm. and that's what I'll do with it mm-hmm. The other two, do you, the, um, you others want? Oh. Theology, do you want to say something before I, before I go? Theology, you go first. Um, I was gonna say, what about the role of like right, righteous anger in that? Good question. That's what I'm asking. I That's don't have question. the answer to this. I don't have the answer. I'm asking you. How do they intersect? Where do you? Is there a danger? Does righteous anger? I mean, Jesus was angry at the temple. He there flipped the temple. He was uh, angry. Yeah. Um, where do we have? Is there and um, where did that intersect? It's an it's an open question. I am no. Fiona. <laughs> Can I help on that one? Yeah. Anger is a real emotion. Yes. Should not be denied. Yep. Should be acknowledged. Jesus was angry, as we know. You and we get table. angry about things. And it's important to be angry about things mm. um, and speak up and have a voice. Essential. And not to say that is, is we're doing ourselves an injustice. Mm. It's what, how you then, what you do with that anger. Yes. So I don't necessarily take that anger and then I shoot somebody. I can take that anger and redirect it to something more positive. So it's, it's angry is a real emotion and um, it's not something that should be pushed under the carpet. But it's saying, what do I do with it positively to make change mm. rather than negatively? Number mm. one. Number two. Um, talked about forgiveness. The other flip side is unforgiveness. Mm. Unforgiveness is even worse because yes. unforgiveness is like poison. And you mm. poison yourself, as Mickey rightly said. It's not so much about them, it's about you. And so you actually release yourself by forgiving. Mm. The Lord's Prayer, forgive our trespasses, we forgive those uh, trespasses against us. It's almost like as much as you do, you get the same back. Yes. But also you also realise actually, um, I love what Jesus said at the cross. He's been persecuted it's right at the end. Father, forgive them, for they, for they know not what they're doing. Mm. Now, if we then just contextualise that into this conversation on race, and we can talk about conscious and unconscious bias, mm. because some people don't know what they are doing. Mm. So some things are of pure ignorance, just not knowing, mm. and not naivety, not having that experience. Um, not actually registering that. And so it's so, so, so you've got the level of actually people just, some people just don't get it because they just don't know. Has it been their life? Has it been their history? Um, but have the empathy, and which is really quite good. But so it's, you have to forgive because some people literally just don't know. Mm. Some, then some people know and then they do something about it. Some people know and say, actually, you know what? I don't want no. to deal with this. So and I'm, I'm, I'm backtracking a little bit because we hit on something which is quite important because mm. um, we talked about the bigger picture of um, injustice and um, we talked about the, the bigger picture of, of a white experience, a black experience. Now, what we have to acknowledge, we, we are, are members of Restore, which is, is a multicultural church of mm. South Africans, of English, of Black Caribbean, of Black African, of Chinese, of quite an interesting Multiple, and if you look at our mix, it's, we actually celebrate nations in, in many, many ways, yeah. which, is, which is a blessing and also a challenge. But if you pick that on, take that further and think, okay, God, that's, God's given us this beautiful, wonderful multicolor, then what did I give up to be a part of that? Quick story, really quick story. A very good friend of ours attended a funeral and it was a black funeral. And, and we know when you, Die in Christ, you're, going, you're, you're being with Jesus. So we're going to celebrate, we're going to moan, but we're going to celebrate. And it was a great celebration and, and sort of very, very dear to our hearts, said to myself and, 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 and my wife afterwards. 
now I realize what you gave up to be a part of us. And what they were saying was that actually, I'm beginning to understand your lens. I'm beginning to understand what you are not giving up with something, but, but actually what your commitment is. Because if you think about this, when George Floyd happened, there was not an exodus of black people from the snow. Quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. In fact, the black community supported leadership, pushed for leadership, gave everybody time, was right there. Really quite interesting. Did not. Yes. In fact, actually, you, you, it's quite the opposite. Everybody's like, no, 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 no. We support our leaders. We're a part of this church. We have a voice in that. Yes, we're hurting, but we're a part of it. And that was a beautiful thing to see. Mm. And um, we could say, actually, no, no, it wasn't dealt with at the time, so therefore we'll take umbrage and whatever. No, no, quite the opposite. Some people moved on for whatever reasons, but in, in, in the majority are still there today. Yeah. That says a lot. That says a heaven of a lot in terms of <laughs> what we stand for, what we believe and what we hope for as a people, as a church, and mm. what we can be. Yes. Because we are demonstrating what we believe in our actions. Mm -hmm. And I think that in itself speaks volumes and is, is a message to be heard and to be seen and to be acted on because we believe what we're saying rather than not. Um, so yeah, so going back to my final point, I was actually thinking actually, um, I wrote a few things through there. So next a little bit in, term, in terms of how we are made. And yes, we are fearfully and wonderfully made and we are all unique and we all have our own fingerprint. But I will say this, the black experience, both professionally and in church, is very different. Yes. And um, it's interesting. I, I was blessed to live in Germany for seven years, a black guy, a black architect working in Germany. Oh. Interesting. Interesting. I, uh, as an architect, we, 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 I never forget this. We're in opening of one of our buildings. I'm sitting on the second row. And they say, um, can Paul Henry come forward? And I stood up and they looked around and thought, is this is that oh god now it's a multi-million pound building that we've delivered as a practice mm. as as a black person the black professional it's often our experience that people don't think it's you you didn't do that <laughs> yeah that is our reality on a day-to-day -day basis if you look at the statistics in terms of banks if a black business goes for a loan and a white business goes for a loan you find that black business doesn't quite qualify yes these are the realities of today, of what we experience. When you're at university, look at the profile of how many black kids are there. I'm not saying black kids are more white, white is better, black is not. I'm saying actually intelligence is there for everybody. Yeah. How many people get through the system? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you look at the facts of, go back to primary school, and the survey was done in terms of a group of children and the ones that are acting out. And this is interesting. And what was interesting was when the black child acted out, they were more highlighted yes. than the white child. I saw this, yeah. So what, what are we saying? We're, we're talking about an unconscious bias. We're talking about a reality which is lived. So if in, in our educational establishments, it's there, never mind in our churches that it's there. Mm. I'm not saying that people are going, I'm racist. No, 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 people are not doing that. It's, we're, it, it is a spiritual matter. It's not a... It's not, it's not, I wish it was so easy to solve. It's a spiritual part, but what we are saying, it is real. Mm. It is tangible. Mm. The journey for Siola, Muki, myself, or any other people is harder. That mm. is our truth. Yep. That is our truth. Our parents will teach us, you need to be 10 times better. Why? Oh my God, yeah. Do they say Why? that to you? Do they say most, that? most definitely. <laughs> or, my, or your parents would say, it would be better for you to marry a white person because it will help you in life. That's the reality of life, mm. of our life in the 21st century. Of the yep. 21st century. In mm. church, out of church, that's our reality. Mm. Now, on, on a day-to-day, -day, nine to five, 24 seven, that's our reality. And with that, because of Jesus, we have the grace. And you find that black people as a, as a rule are actually extremely gracious, extremely mm. forgiving, mm. extremely actually silent, because when we could say something, we don't. When you could push again, you actually don't. Because you want to give the peace. So you'd rather step aside 
I love somebody said this thing about you're walking down the street, you'll find that a black person almost give almost give away for somebody. Mm. And it's interesting, they could say white people do that, but this conversation about race and it's mm. quite specific. Mm. So I'm, I'm I'm highlighting that that mm. view. But what mm. I'm trying to say, the reality of a black person, whether you're in the UK or Germany or in the market, but we'll talk about here for we stop, is actually actually a different experience. However, we have chosen to be a part of this body. Mm. That's important. So if somebody by choice said, I'm a part of this thing, then we're saying that we con contribute positively and saying that together, and that's the thing about endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace is so instrumental, but it's mm. also acknowledging the color of that. Yes. And, and, and Lani, I'll, I'll say this and be quiet. Lani, you said something which is I think, really quite profound the other day. And you said that um, in terms of perspectives, there's one perspective that talks about, I don't see color. Mm. And, and you, you, you beautifully, I mean, you can expand a lot much better than I, I can, but you, it's, 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 you, you actually, I'm paraphrasing yourself. You said, it's actually not that, because it's important to see people for who they are. Yeah. And that statement can be taken the wrong way, but in its genesis, that statement is very, very open, accepting, and not without prejudice mm. and without walls, but in the, um, I mean, Lana, you can expand, can you expand on that? Can you put it much better than I do? In terms yeah, of I think um, what happened in, in one of our dry runs, um, preluding this, Paul, you reminded us that spirit is actually colorless. That's where our unity as a church needs to be. And then, Fiola, you were quick to say, hang on, we shouldn't disregard or not acknowledge color differences and, and yeah, identity. That's right. And then I, I chipped in quickly and I said, I think this is um, potentially something, um, and uh, South Africans might relate to this. I think um, there was a time, and, and I think it's up to quite recent, where a lot of people in South Africa would say that I don't see color. And I think culturally, there was a time where we, we had to reach out to each other because apartheid and racism was so um, concrete, visible, and um, legalized. Um, that for us to actively move towards, it, towards each other, that was something that we tried to say. Well, I have heard people say that tries to bring unity and harmony. But I know that over here, when you say that it lands completely differently because it does disregard, it makes you feel unseen, doesn't yes. it? Yeah. Um, yeah. That it doesn't matter whether you're black and I'm not gonna acknowledge your history and your pain and your daily strife. But even today, guys, I'm learning from the fact that you, you um, the things that you're saying to me, these are things that I, I don't have in my daily life. My, my, uh, my parents wouldn't have, told me you have to work 10 times as hard because otherwise they're going to choose the black person. Um, I, that is not known to me. And, and that is the white privilege that we and I am so unaware of that now as we become aware, it's the faith and actions, but what do we do with this information? Yeah, I want yeah. to help you. I want there to be a space for you. I think there was a time in lockdown where on social media, a lot of people said, I can't breathe. And I think that was a direct result of the... the, the George uh, Lloyd's murder. Yes. And there was also another guy before him that got murdered. Mm. They, I, and I'm sorry, I can't remember his name. Um, Is it Ahmaud Arbery? Yes, I think so. And I think for uh, it's so important for the white community. And I'm waffling a bit here, but I feel like we should feel threatened. <laughs> by um, the black community sort of rising up and having this identity, even in church, to sort of have that cohesiveness as a group. That's been so powerful and healing for you guys that we should, we should welcome that. There is enough fish and bread <laughs> for mm. everyone. <laughs> there's more than and, enough. Yes, there's more than enough for everyone. Um, Yes, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm confronted with so many awful um, impulses in myself when mm. the first time I saw the, there's a picture that goes around when you talk about equality, about 
people looking over a wall. You've probably all seen this one, but for the yeah, purpose yeah. of this conversation, I might just quickly explain it again uh, or repeat it again. So there's three children trying to look over a wall. One of them, I think, has a, a very high ladder or something that they can, oh my goodness, one of you is going to have to help me out here. And then I'll tell, tell you what my response is. Mookie, please yeah. help me. So there's one image, I believe, where one's got the ladder and the other two are on the ground. And so that person has access to be able to climb high enough to see over the wall. The second uh, image is of the same three people, three, um, yeah, three people. And it, the statement is now equality. So each of them has the same equal sized height of a box that they can right. stand on. Yet the tallest person still is able to see over the wall, but the two who are shorter can't see over the wall, even though those boxes are equally measured and are at the right. same height. Right. The third picture is of the same three, but now they're talking about equity which is to bring everybody to the same spot. So it's saying that this tall person who can already see over the wall has a smaller box. The person, the two others who are slightly, sh or who are much shorter, get a higher box, which allows them to also see over the wall, bringing them to the same level that that tall person would have had without the box. Oh, thank you, Muki, for helping me out there. Okay. And just sort of as a, um, Disclaimer, this is not going to be a nice truth about me. The first time I saw that image was quite a few years ago when Heidi did something in church about equality and equity. Right, yeah. yeah. And I thought, I am standing on that tall ladder. I don't want to give the ladder away. It's my ladder. It's my mm. ladder. I worked very hard for this ladder. And we've had to come and find a different ladder in the UK because we can't, we don't have ladders anymore in South Africa because now we're white. And there was this something that stood up in me that sort of, you're threatening my existence now. But Muki, you reminded me one day that there's still enough for everyone. God takes care of us all. And there should be space for us all at the table. So I, I have just had to, you know, there's awful things coming out. And you have to bring that to light in front of God. You, we have to be prayerful about this. We have to be honest and vulnerable with each other. And I think as we sort of start to pull the threads together of this conversation, yeah. I want to remind everyone what Muki said in the beginning. This conversation is going to land differently for different people. Yeah. Um, whether you are Black or white or Chinese or whatever minority or whatever color or culture you're from there will be different points that trigger something in you in this conversation. You might think, are we still talking about this? You might think it's high time. Um, you will have, a, you'll have, we'll have different reactions. I think all of our responsibility individually and corporately then, but first in individually, is we have to go before God. And I have to ask God, what do you want to show me for myself? Mm. And then what do you want me to do? Not what Muki wants me to do. Yep. What Black Lives Matter even, what they want me to do. God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do in this situation? How can I, um, how can I celebrate Christ? How can I glorify Christ? Yeah. And then ultimate, sorry, this, do you know, on our ending note, Diola, I wonder, if you want to tell people how you came to Christ initially, like we did in, in, the, in the dry run, because I think ultimately we need to remember that um, there are people that lose faith and don't come to church anymore because of this issue. And race is an opportunity for us to glorify Christ and come together in unity. But also we stand a chance of not leading people to Christ because of this whole issue. Mm. So it's such a beautiful story, Theola, about how you felt disconnected and then came to Christ. Do you want to share that story maybe? Do you feel you can? I'm sure, yeah. Um, well, no one was racist to me, first of all. Um, I guess I just felt a bit isolated and like I wasn't really that engaged in Christ. Um, and it was only when I had like two black youth leaders who like made the repeated efforts to like include me and like get to know me as like a person and like force me to come to things mm -hmm. but I ended up like 
believing in Christ and stuff and yeah and even like with God's help then like when my faith got stronger that helped me like even overcome like racism in education and things like that so mm. to say briefly yeah yeah and that's such a beautiful thing mm. I think a key thing in that is I mean you know there'll be many more conversations that we'll be having but certainly representation matters mm. being yourself in the body of Christ matters seeing mm. yourself in leadership matters mm. seeing yourself as an actor seeing myself on screen matters seeing stories told that I can relate to matters we've got people who aren't coming to God like Lani said because they aren't seen we are showing people a white God or a white Jesus realistically Jesus is not white <laughs> mm. but that's what we've been shown and you could go deep into the history of where the church has stood at the beginning when it mm. comes to slavery and racism and all of those things and they've been at the helm and it's that has followed and continued up until today mm. and so you know we have to be so aware that whilst there is so much work to be done there is also hope mm. we have to believe that God is working mm. but we all have work to do both within ourselves and within the communities that we find ourselves in because mm. we cannot be the ones to block people from meeting with meeting Jesus come on yes we cannot be the blockades for that and so you know as absolutely as we as we I guess get to the end of this conversation but it's opening the doors for many more um mm. and I'm incredibly thankful that we could we could be here this morning or be here today whatever the time is for you um to talk about this and to to open the door and to really have honest yeah. real conversations and I just want to thank Paul I want to thank Fiola I want to thank you Lani for coming and being here and sharing your stories and sharing your hearts and being humble and open um because we're building something here and I think that's really important and we should take that forward for the next you know next conversation and and, and next active thing that we we decide to do both within ourselves but as a church as a as a people of Christ um, so, yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank God you. bless you. Thank pleasure. you, everybody. It's a pleasure, a pleasure, a pleasure. And also acknowledging Emma in the background there. Yes, Emma. <laughs> oh, you. A silent watcher and listener. In every conversation. That's an interesting <laughs> one, isn't it? It's only Emma that can sit and listen for an She's hour and not say anything. She's the queen. <laughs> Well done, girl. Let's <laughs> talk. No, thank you. Thanks, uh, Mickey said it, but just thank you all very much indeed. And I think it is, it is a catalyst. And let's see, this is a catalyst. As a catalyst for something greater. Yeah. Um, because we've hit on many multifacets mm. today. And that will help unlock. And also, just anybody who hears this and you want to reach out to people, reach out. Yeah. Also reach out to leadership at church, connect mm. with your home group, make sure that you are speaking to somebody. Don't mm. suffer in silence. Mm. Um, connect to the body somehow, on put intentionally. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's only together we are stronger. Yes. If we isolate, we are weaker. Mm. But connect somehow or just shout out, say help, um, so people can rally around. Yeah. And for us, I think the biggest thing for me takeaway is um when God puts you in a position of responsibility, see everybody. Yes. There's not big people, little people, black people, white people. See everybody and intentionally mean it. Because when you do, um, especially with what's going on in the world, people are looking for authenticity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when so people will look, know that you're Christian because you love one another. And that's where the biggest witness to what heaven could be like, like on earth. Yes. But it's hard work <laughs> and it's not automatic. Mm. But there is hope because we've got the wonderful agent of the Holy Spirit yeah. to make a difference. So just want to say thank you to everybody and, and appreciate yourself, Lani, for making yourself vulnerable as well. Yeah. And sharing heart in so many ways. And um, I think that's re really commendable. And yeah, onwards and upwards. Onwards and upwards. 
Amen. Bye, everyone.